Welcome to The Art of Social Media, a podcast by Social Pilot. We host in-depth discussions with world-leading social media marketing experts that will help you discover the techniques, strategies, and skills you need to use to grow your business using social media. Now, here's your host, Tejas Mehta. Today we have Neil Sheffer with us on the call. Uh, Neil, thank you so much for joining. I'm fascinated with your background. And let me read out first before I run out of breath. Uh, you are one of the most influential voices in digital marketing in today's day and age. You've spoken in many conferences and you've been conferred upon uh, several uh, prizes and lists. Uh, you are a fractional CMO to many, uh, many uh, high growth organizations. You've been a coach to a number of high performing digital marketing teams as well. You authored three books, the latest being Age of Influence. Uh, you teach at Rutgers as well. You're fluent in Japanese and Mandarin, and you fly all over the country and beyond. Man, how do you do this? How do you, how do you get the time? What's the secret sauce? <laughs> well, uh, I work for myself, which helps, right? I get to determine my own schedule. And I am just really passionate about helping businesses with this thing that we call, whether it's social media marketing or, or more after COVID, just digital marketing in general, um, that really is a passion of mine. And because I want to help more, it makes me want to learn more. What are the different ways in which I can help? What am I missing out on? So, you know, I, I tell the story. I wrote my first book way back in 2009 called Understanding, Leveraging, and Maximizing LinkedIn. And after I finished the rough draft of that book, I'm like, what's next? Twitter, check. Facebook check. Um, and I never wanted to, you know, I, I look at things very holistically. So I never wanted to tell companies, you got to be on TikTok or you got to be on LinkedIn. Um, really, every business situation is very, very different. And I want to be able to provide all the options. Sort of like I, we were talking about medicine uh, just before we started the record button. Sort of like when you go to a, a general practitioner, when you go to a doctor, um, they know many, many things and they have an idea that if you have this symptom, probably you're going to want to do this. And that's sort of how I model my own work off of. I want to be able to uh, understand the whole breadth and depth of digital and social media marketing and be able to you know, recommend things. So, you know, it's funny, uh, we're going to talk a lot about influencer marketing. Uh, I wrote this book, The Age of Influence back in 2020, right when COVID started. And after I wrote the book, very similarly, although I get asked a lot about it, I'm already writing my next book about digital marketing. So, um, you know, that's that's what really excites me. And um, yeah, I, I enjoy doing it. And, and every day I love to help. And every day is a learning experience. And what more can I ask for? Wonderful. Uh, I'm going to try and get as many secrets from you as possible, uh, but I know we wouldn't have enough time, uh, but let's, let me try. Let me give it my best. Uh, I'm going to jump into a difficult one directly. Uh, how do you think is the digital marketing, online marketing landscape changing? Well, <laughs> this is really the, the forward of this book that I've been working on for some time, but, you know, coronavirus, this pandemic just accelerated what we call the digital transformation. So the digital transformation is a word that we heard a lot like in the IT world, but I saw this in sales and marketing for the last decade where companies and people, they used to do things by phone, you know, traditional media uh, or, or, you know, traditional methods like billboards and, you know, radio ads. And people are primarily consuming information and being entertained digitally today. And with COVID, that just really accelerated uh, because we couldn't get out in person and we spent more time, uh, you know, on our phones. And, and we have the most addictive social media that's emerged called TikTok that has even helped us spend even more time on social media, depending on the generation. So I would say that everything has just become accelerated. It's become more and more important. And what's really interesting is social media has always been an important piece, but with the pandemic, I would argue that what is old is new. So even things like SEO, email marketing and marketing automation, these have become even more important for businesses. And I think that's why, you know, I don't know about you, but I saw a lot of businesses all of a sudden out of the blue start to email me after COVID, right? They, they finally understood that. Uh, and SEO is the same. So there's, we have the, the brand new, we have the TikTok, the short form video, uh, Pinterest idea pins, and we could talk all about social media. Maybe Elon Musk buying out Twitter. There's been a lot of buzz about Twitter uh, lately, but we also have 
these, you know, things that every company must work on. And they really haven't been a lot of companies at least. So, you know, after I wrote The Age of Influence to Joss, one of the reasons why I sort of pivoted to become this general digital marketing is because companies reached out to me saying, we need to do influencer marketing. And I'm like, well, wait a minute for what you want to do. That may not be the best choice. You may want to do something else. Um, and it's almost like going to the doctor saying, I know that I have thyroid cancer, knock on wood, um, when you need to let the professional let you know what is best. And it may just be you have a vitamin deficiency, right? So it, it's a similar thing. I think that a lot of companies don't have their basic digital and I'd say social media infrastructure in place. And all of a sudden they want to go after influencers or TikTok. They want to go for the latest the latest, greatest, you know, trendy thing. And I'm all about, let's take a step back before you start to create your own NFT, right? Let's take a step back and make sure that you have your digital house in order. And I've become very passionate about this. And yes, influencer marketing is wonderful. And, and every company should have it as part of their strategy, but there are other things they should have as part of their strategy as well. Interesting point here, right? Uh, having your basics in place first and then going after the uh, big, bigger uh, shots, that, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, how would a basic uh, social media infrastructure look like? Uh, a lot of brands have Facebook pages, Twitter pages, Instagram, LinkedIn, they want to do it all. And uh, they kind of run out of time or you know they run out of ideas. Uh, how, how would a brand approach digital, uh, digital marketing on social media specifically? Yeah, this is the challenge. And this is why I wrote The Age of Influence because social media for brands is pay to play, uh, regardless of what you say. Now, there are areas where it's not. So if you're really good at short form video, there are brands that have gotten massive exposure at, on TikTok or brands that have launched their, their business from Instagram. So it is possible. But for a majority of brands, it is very, very difficult. And the payback, the ROI of sending a piece of content out there and getting 0.01% engagement um, can be very disheartening, <laughs> you know, day after day, week after week, month after month. You know, I, I think it's time and, you know, the age of influence is really written to say, hey, you don't have to do it on your own. If, if brands, organic social media doesn't get much visibility, people's social media posting gets visibility. Influencers content gets visibility. So instead of thinking we have to do it all ourselves, let's use that energy we spend trying to create this content and manage this. Let's just collaborate with influencers. Let's collaborate with customers. Let's collaborate with fans, collaborate with employees. And that's really the heart of what the age of influence is all about. And let's use that to really get the word of mouth going in social media. If it's not going to happen from our own page, let's make sure that other people are at least talking about us. So I think for a lot of companies, organic social media has become very much uh, performance marketing. It's become paid social. Uh, organically, yes, you need credibility. You still need to be publishing content. But what if you could publish the content of your fans talking about you, your fans shooting videos about your product or taking pictures of your product? We call this user-generated content. And I would really push any brand that's listening to try to move to a 100% user-generated content organic social media strategy as quick as possible, because I think that's going to be the most effective thing for you. So what this means is that social media isn't just this place to publish content. It's really a place to develop relationships. And this is something, unfortunately, no, no tool can help you do. It's you going out there and engaging with other people and developing relationships with all these people I talked about, you know, influencers and fans and customers. And I think that's really where the value of social media is. And a big part of it is your employees, is getting your employees on, especially for B2B companies, right, with LinkedIn, is getting your employees on social media, giving them what they need to do to be active, because they are going to be able to help to spread the word a lot more effectively than you can. And I mean, do the math. If you have 10 employees, they're going to outperform any single post you do by 10x, right? So that's sort of where I think social media fits in. And like I said, you know, you still need to do social media as a brand. But if you rethink how you think about social media, uh, I think that there are more effective ways that you can get a lot more out of it. This is an interesting take. Uh, when I hear the word influence, uh, influencer, uh, I always think of, you know, somebody like you, or you know uh, somebody like uh, Kim Kardashian, uh, who has like millions of followers, right? Uh, that's what I think about when I talk about influence. So, so my question was going to be, how would a smaller brand, you know, work with influencer? 
But I think what you're kind of uh, uh, also mentioning is that influencer does not need to be like a celebrity. It can be like customers, employees, and your users as well. Uh, is that true? Yes. Uh, you know, media influence has become democratized. And I'll, I'll give you an example, right? Um, I'm actually going to go here onto my Instagram. And I am going to, I, I hope this works because if it doesn't look, work, I'm going to look really stupid. Um, but just to give you a real simple way of looking at this. One second here. Okay. So uh, I am looking at, and they're a great company, don't get me wrong, but this is just to illustrate this point. I'm looking at Social Media Examiner's Instagram page. They are verified. They have 131,000 followers. Yesterday they posted, well, seven hours ago. Okay. Let's look at something they posted yesterday. Yesterday they posted a 10 image carousel, six new LinkedIn sales navigator features to improve your prospecting. This got 51 likes. Okay. This is 131,000 followers, 51 likes. Yesterday, I also published an Instagram carousel post. I had three images. It was of uh, an office building that I went to locally here in Irvine, California. I had a a face-to-face meeting for the first time in a while locally. I have, uh, at last count, I have 15,500 followers. And this post got 137 likes. So I have one seventh the number of followers, yet more engagement. And this is because what you see happen here today is because tools like Social Pilot are so awesome. Brands just keep on publishing content after content after content, right? They feel the need to publish every day. And maybe they publish on Instagram twice a day, three times a day. And they don't look at their analytics enough to understand what is engaging with people, what's not, right? And then you have people, I don't publish every day. I publish when I feel I have something of high quality to publish, like most people. And therefore, you know, what you're finding is that people with fewer followers, because they're people, not brands, for all these different reasons, they get more engagement, right? So it would require, you know, and that was Social Media Examiner. If you have an Instagram profile with 10,000 followers, you can see how just Working with one person with 15,500 followers can probably get you way more engagement than you can in any single post. But we can take it even further down because when I wrote The Age of Influence, we were just starting to talk about nano influencers. These are people that have between one and 10,000 followers. So it's not the number of followers. Yes, you want to have a minimum number. You want to work with people that are active in social media. They're publishing frequently and they're getting engagement frequently. But even at 1,000 followers, right, if they're getting you know, 50, uh, 75 engagements on a piece of content, that's probably as many as you're getting with 10,000 followers. And they have a very, very niche community, right? The the people that are very, very connected to this person because they don't have that many followers. You know, people that have a lot of followers, are they fake followers, right? Um, How do they get that many followers? What what do they talk about? And sometimes these celebrities get a lot of followers because they're celebrities or they're good looking. Um, But people that have fewer followers got there because of their content, because of a niche. And if your product fits their niche, then that is a great person to collaborate with. Uh, Interesting. Uh, So even smaller brands can look for nano influencers and get started in that journey. Uh, How do we look for for those influencers? How do we get started? The first thing to do, so I had a really, really interesting experiment. Um, there are, uh, let's, for, for lack of a better term, uh, enrichment tools. So if you have an email address, you can put this email address in a tool. There's, there's nothing evil here. These are all GDPR compliant and uh, many large enterprises use these, but you can get social media profiles. So I have been going on to LinkedIn and basically saying, hey, thanks for subscribing to my email list. I'd love to connect with you here on LinkedIn. And I'm going to I'm going to actually read to you one person. <laughs> now, I know if you're a company you can't connect with people. You you are able to do this obviously on other platforms. Um one person actually said of the things I like about LinkedIn, it's not just about reaching out. It's also about following up with relevance and intent. People after all like to feel special. That's never ever going on a style. And as great as pets are, probably I'll ask someone, the best, juiciest, most memorable validation comes from who else? Other humans. Here's a little LinkedIn story. I remember that this week when Neil Schaefer sent me a request, LinkedIn coaches go back and forth on whether a personal note is mandatory for the click and release of the connection process. Some subscribe to short and direct sentences, others opt for nothing at all. Either is fine with me. But not only did Neil opt for the former, he also used a relevant and intentional point. I subscribed to his email newsletter. I was on his list and now he was following up. 
personally, simply, affably. A humble note of thanks and a straightforward proposal to join each other's networks. It served a purpose, but as pleasant surprises go, it still sits in the memory. And I'll remember it because he made me feel more like more than a data spoke on his ever-turning content wheel. The moral, it's not only about communications. It's also not just about clicks and numbers. It's about making connections. Engage your audience's positive feelings consistently and they'll show up for you. And this is a gentleman that just published this in his LinkedIn you know, feed today and, and let me know that he talked about me. Um, and that's the human connection. So when you're a company page, you cannot do that on LinkedIn. You can't follow people. You can't do that from a Facebook page, but you can do it on Instagram. You can do it on Twitter, right? You can do it if they're on TikTok, M- many people aren't. And, that, and that's where Instagram and Twitter have these very, very unique roles as being the communicative platforms, the platforms where companies can act as people and freely engage. And that's why they're so powerful. So, you know, we can find Instagram profiles. I have a client, they're an e-commerce company. They sell hair color. And they did this exercise and found that some of their customers were actually Instagram influencers, people with very, with blue check marks that had over 100,000 followers. And they were customers, right? So... This is the first step, I think, in finding your influencers is number one, go out there and append. If you have an email list, which you should, start appending it and start looking at who is on what platform. And I would do the same thing with your employees. What's really interesting is you can go to Sales Navigator if you have a, if, and we were just talking about Sales Navigator with, with a social media examiner. Sales Navigator has a great feature of being able to go to any company and seeing which employees have posted on LinkedIn in the last 30 days, boom, you have a short list of people to reach out to. So this is really, if we're going to start with people in our own brand affinity, that's where we start. And then after the email list, we can go into our followers as well, right? Who's following us? Often we find influencers amongst them. Once you exhaust that, think like a, think like a consumer, right? If I want to be influenced on a topic like hair color, how would I search for these people? I'd search on YouTube. I'd search the hashtag on Instagram. And these searches will expose you to people that have influence, at least for that keyword. And that's a great place to start. You can do searches on Google or whatever search engine you use, and you'll find a lot of thought leader lists or beauty experts. Uh, Twitter also has something called Twitter lists, where people create lists of people that are experts in different industries. So there's loads of sources out there to allow you to find people. But I always start with the people that already know, like, and trust the company, the brand. Because the problem and the failure that a lot of companies make with influencer marketing is they just find people with either lots of followers or they find people because they're on some influencer marketplace and it's just convenient to work with them, but they don't know anything about those people. And those people don't know anything about the brand. How can they be authentic talking about the brand if they don't use them themselves? And that's why it's really powerful when you tap into people with no like, and trust that when they talk about you on social media, it comes from a voice of authenticity. And that is what we need more than ever in social media. I think being authentic on social media, I think that's what is winning today uh, from what I see from our customers as well, as well as great brands. Authenticity is very powerful, uh, be it in person to person connection, like the way you kind of reached out to your LinkedIn, uh, to your subscriber as well as to kind of other uh, influences and brands. So that, that's very powerful. Uh, now let's multiply this problem, right? Uh, we you, you laid out a path for brands to kind of work on influencer marketing, but when an agency has multiple brands to work with, right? This becomes like an arduous task, right? It, it's, it's an uphill task. Uh, what's the shortcut for agencies? How do agencies win in influencer marketing? Well, agencies, so the spin that I gave you was for brands. Agencies, regardless, they get paid to do social media. So they have to do something. And obviously this is where making sure if I'm an agency now and I've run my own agency before, you want to make sure you have a paid social media budget. There is no way to be successful just organically unless you hit a big on TikTok or what have you. So having a paid social budget is going to be huge. Yes, you are right in that engaging with people. Marketing is one to many. Influencers is one to one. It's more geared towards PR. And that's why some companies actually have the title is influencer relations because they understand that it takes time. That's why if I'm an agency and I want to pitch this, or if I want to do this on behalf of a brand, I want to create a program. So the initial outreach is one to one. 
we, we can't avoid that. Yes, there are templates we can use, right? Um, we can put people in a funnel as if we were in sales. And, uh, you know, so we can do it efficiently somewhat, right? Maybe reach out to 10 people a day um, after you do the initial search. Maybe you hire a VA overseas to do the search that I just talked about, right? So there are ways of efficiently doing this. But after that, you want to bring everyone into a program right? Where maybe once a month you send a newsletter to everybody. Once a month you do a webinar training with everybody. And that's how you can scale it. But you have to have that formal program. A lot of companies call these brand ambassador programs, uh, whatever you want to call it. Th that is the way you make it efficient in the future. But at the beginning, yes, it is going to take a little bit of time. But guess what? Brands know that influencer marketing is sexy right now. And as an agency, if you said, hey, we're going to start to include this as part of our offering, I think it's actually going to help your agency, help differentiate you, and you'll be able to get money uh, to be able to fund that effort. I feel we should do a training program just for agencies and have you as the speaker. Uh, that would be like tremendous value add for the agencies to do step by step. Uh, uh, thanks for sharing that idea. That's wonderful. Oh, sure thing. <laughs> It's a, great. it's a common topic these days. <laughs> right. Yep, absolutely. Uh, but I think uh, uh, your your depth of knowledge and the way you laid it laid out uh, hit, hits a home run with me. So that's, that's wonderful. The Art of Social Media is brought to you by Social Pilot. To find out more about Social Pilot and how we can give you everything you need to hit your social media marketing goals, visit socialpilot.co. And then make sure to search for The Art of Social Media in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, or anywhere else podcasts are found. Make sure to click follow so you don't miss any future episodes. On behalf of the team here at Social Pilot, thanks for listening. <laughs>